Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Kalen from Kite, the AI-powered coding assistant. These days, you probably know AI is almost everywhere that you look, from tailored ads on your Instagram to the familiar voices that perk up when you say, hey Alexa, or okay Google. Allegra, what is the weather outside? It is 74 degrees and sunny. Huh? It is 74 degrees and sunny. Where? Outside. What about it? The temperature outside is 74 degrees and sunny. I don't know about that. AI is coming to know us like a best friend, or perhaps a stalker. Hey Alexa, play the theme song to The Office. In today's video, we're going to use a pre-trained convolutional neural network called the Speech Emotion Analyzer to detect the emotions of two characters from the popular TV show, The Office. The link to the original model is available in the description below. We'll classify emotions into five categories, angry, calm, fearful, happy, and sad. And we'll see whose emotions are easier to predict, the regional manager or the assistant to the regional manager. First, let's cover some background on signal processing. In signal processing, an audio signal gets represented by its waveform, which is the shape of its graph as a function of time. When processing the audio waveform, we convert it to a representation of the frequency response, which is a machine-readable structure, and this allows us to extract features. We choose a range from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz because this is the range that our ears can pick up. After we extract the features using a technique known as MEL frequency sepstral coefficients, or MFCC, we pass them to a convolutional neural network, or CNN for short. Even though CNNs are typically used for computer vision tasks, they are also suitable for audio, and the process of dividing an audio file moment by moment is analogous to splitting a video frame by frame. So in the series of still images that comprise a video is just like the series of audio frequencies that make up a dynamic frequency spectrum. Next, we'll explain the architecture of the pre-trained CNN that we'll be using to analyze the audio. CNNs are just like normal neural networks, except they begin with a convolutional base. What this does is it identifies distinctive patterns in the data that it then uses to make predictions. This is good because it allows us to discard the bulk of our data that is too generic to have predictive value, and that in turn helps us reduce computational intensity. With enough training, these layers can finally hone in on patterns that humans pick up intuitively. At the output layer, we use the softmax activation function, which is standard for multi-class classification. We have 10 neurons that correspond to the 10 categories of the speech emotion analyzer's original classification problem, which predicts gender in addition to the five emotional states I mentioned earlier. Since Michael and Dwight are both male, we will abstract away the gender component later. The pre-trained neural net has learned to classify vocal expressions as one of five emotions, angry, calm, fearful, happy, and sad. Let's review a few of the sound bites that we're going to use. As you watch and listen, think about how you'd interpret the emotion expressed in the clip naturally. I declare bankruptcy! I am fast. To give you a reference point, I'm somewhere between a snake and a mongoose, and a panther. I enjoy having breakfast in bed. I like waking up to the smell of bacon. Sue me. And since I don't have a butler, I have to do it myself. So, most nights before I go to bed, I will lay six strips of bacon out on my George Foreman grill. Then I go to sleep. When I wake up, I plug in the grill. I go back to sleep again. Then I wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. Someone committed a crime and I did not become a Lackawanna County Volunteer Sheriff's Deputy to make friends. And by the way, I haven't. Okay, let's get down to business. We begin by importing the modules that we're going to need. Next, we read in the pre-trained speech emotion analyzer model, which is stored in a JSON file format. We attach pre-trained weights to the network architecture by calling load weights method and passing the file path to the downloaded weights. Next, we specify the gradient descent optimizer that will help our CNN learn faster. We'll be using RMS prop. Then we compile the model. And voila, the speech and motion analyzer is ready to predict motions in audio data. Now we just need to prepare the wave files for Michael and Dwight. Let's write a function for this called read audio files. 
It takes in a directory D, time duration for each clip, DUR, and the target sample rate. For each audio clip in our directory, we calculate the MFCCs and append these values as the sole feature in a data frame that is initially empty. Last, we fill in the NAs with zeros, so our audio clips, which are of different durations, all have the same dimensionality. That's to say, we do this to avoid error messages. Now that we've defined our function to extract features, let's call it. We've got all we need to run the speech emotion analyzer now. As noted before, the speech emotion analyzer predicts emotions, whether voices are male or female, in addition to predicting one of five emotional states. Since both Dwight and Michael are male, we can write a function to abstract away the gender component so we can focus just on the predicted emotion. To do this, we write a function called sumprobs that combines the male and female probabilities for each emotion in the softmax output. This reduces the number of classes from 10 to 5. After this transformation, we use the argmax method to determine the classification, which is that class with the highest predicted likelihood. We store this as the variable argmax. Finally, we make predictions for the audio files by feeding them into our model. There's one last thing we should do. Our predictions are currently rendered as integers, which don't intuitively indicate emotional states for us. So let's restore the emotion labels so humans can interpret our results more easily. For this, we write a function called inverse transform. This function takes two arguments, the predicted classes represented as integers and a dictionary that maps these integers to the corresponding strings. We create a dictionary called emotions that translates numerical predictions to emotional states. We're going to pass it along with argmax to the inverse transform function. Now all we have to do is call inverse transform and we'll see our predictions rendered as strings. Let's take a look at how we did. Okay, we correctly predicted just 3 out of 10 observations, although our accuracy rate for Michael was twice as high as Dwight. If you're a fan of The Office, you probably wouldn't be surprised that Michael is a ham and wears his emotions on his sleeve, and he displays them in a way that are just much easier to naturally classify than Dwight, whose behavior is not exactly what you call normal. Indeed, with just one exception, the model predicted that everything Dwight said was fearful. Which, can you really blame it? It's better to be hurt by someone you know accidentally than by a stranger on purpose. We got just one prediction right for Dwight, which is exactly what you'd expect from a random guess. And even though we got twice the accuracy from Michael's clips, the model is still a far cry away from humans and what we can understand. So why the low performance? Well, one reason could be that, unlike a TV audience, the speech emotion analyzer only considers the audio information as a waveform. And what this means is the model does not consider the facial expression shown, nor the meaning of the words expressed. This would be like having your eyes closed and trying to identify the emotional meaning of spoken words in a foreign language. And even though these metrics are a bit low, they're probably in line with the other performance metrics at the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. If you'd like to try your hand at this, you can find the code in the description below. And if you got better performance than we did, please share it in the comments. But before you begin, save yourself the time, save yourself the energy, and save yourself from the office-induced carpal tunnel syndrome with Kite the AI autocomplete for Python. It has intelligent snippets, which automatically rank code completions using all the documentation on the web. So happy coding and stay tuned for more. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.